Good morning to all of you. Welcome. So this morning we'll be analyzing the entrepreneurship in the terms of investment. I will be the moderator of this session. My name is Semi Hakim. I am the CEO of Kirk Project and the founder. And I will be doing the moderation of this panel, but I have four wonderful speakers today with me. So if you want, let's do a short, a brief introduction round. I'm going to ask you to introduce yourself. Gilson, do you want to start? I'm so sorry, I was muted. Thank you very much. I'm the founder of the startup and is a early stage investment platform. There is a new model for Turkey and we are trying to implement this. And we are co-founding with our partners and investors and I'll be explaining in details in the future, future sessions. Okay, Jam. Uh, I'm also one of the founders of Ida Capital, again an early stage investment company. During the last five years, we had nine, nine, nine investments, nine early stage investments, and we have almost 30 years of finance and entrepreneurship. Aslı, good morning to all of you. My name is Aslı Kurul Türkmen. I'm the General Secretary of Endeavor Turkey. We are a global organization and a foundation based also here in Turkey, an NGO, let's say. And we are the community. We have the target to be the community of the largest global entrepreneurships in the world. We have this network and we are investing in them. We are trying to support them. Uh, we have a platform of five. We have a team of 500 members. We are active more than in more than 40 countries. We have a catalyst fund based on USA of 250k million dollars. We are operating in 32 markets and also they said that other than USA, we are the third fund tiger and the Endeavor is the third fund tiger who is uh, investing in the development, developing countries. So this is a strategy starting from Latin America, from Africa and continuing from, for 20 years. They are the single community that they are doing that. So we are operating in those markets. And we are very enthusiastic about your chapter two. So our first hypothesis was accurate, turned out to be true. Uh, so we are very excited about the VIP system. Cecil? Good morning. My name is Cecil Levin. As you may understand from my speaking, I am French and we are working with Ministry of Exterior till from 2013 and since of 2016, especially in France, we are operating for individual and companies who want to establish businesses in France. We are operating with large scale companies with holdings. When I began in this business of uh, uh, in this line of business, you 
the the profiles of the companies started to change and also our profession started to change we had a different level of enthusiasm in here also the issues that we encountered were a little bit different and we are together with people in here thank you very much for this opportunity you're welcome It's, it's a very big pleasure for me to moderate this panel. So let's come to my first question. What about the Turkish ecosystem? Can you evaluate this system? Can you, can you tell me a few things? What are the opportunities? What are the pros, the cons, the handicaps, the potentials? Let's continue in the same way. Of course. I'm for a very long time in the ecosystem entrepreneurship in Turkey. I'm entrepreneurship myself. So when, when we are in something for such a long time, you have the time actually to observe. I started back in 2014, and I started by explaining, by describing this system. Because whenever you are saying like enterprise, what, what are the people thinking? They are thinking about a small, small size a enterprise or, or like an individual. But especially after 2010, the colleges, the universities have established hubs, have established entrepreneurship uh, opportunities. So this is how the ecosystem uh, ecosystem started to develop. And they were, this is something very promising, who, who's, which supported everything developed during this period. But recently, during the last two years, we, we have Yamek Sepete and examples like that. So we started with examples like that, but now we have um, startups like uh, Unicorn. So, and of course, I can say that the investors and entrepreneurships have played roles, vital roles in developing the ecosystem and the invest we, we today actually we can see the results of the investments made back in 2010. And in 2021, I can say that we have even higher figures. And I'm, I, I truly hope that in the next future, we'll I even see higher numbers. This ecosystem is continuously developing. And with the current population, I mean, especially talking about our trial, our target markets, markets, I think that we have an excellent market opportunity, a growing opportunity. There are a lot of opportunities for the investors. This, there are cooperations. And I mean, whenever I'm comparing with the USA and UK companies, I can see that there are even more suitable environments for investments here in Turkey. And while all of those happens, the quality of entrepreneurship and investment is increasing. Of course, I'm totally with you on this line. I think that this is a, a very exciting topic for Turkey agenda. We are working since 2015 on agricultural things and food. And whenever I'm going back to 2004, I can see that there is a very large very big grow and uh, I thank you very much. It's a very valuable perspective. Jem, what about you? What are you thinking? The startup ecosystem in Turkey, I mean, whenever we are comparing it with the global scale, global criteria, our economical growth is just 1% of the global economic growth whenever we are looking our, at our metrics, at our measurements. But I mean, the number of enterprises, entrepreneurships in states, let, 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 let's the state along in, in India, for example, and the number of ventures in Turkish and the capacity, whenever we are comparing those capacities, we are in a disadvantaged position. I mean, I think that this is the, the, the empty half of the, uh, of, of a glass, but also there is a full, full 
a half of a glass. We are continuing to grow. We have global capitals through Latin America, through Eastern Asia. I, I, I can see that Turkey is, however, bypassed through those capital flows. I mean, for, for, for the smart investors who are in an early positions, I think that Turkish is still in a very good position. And I think that in terms of our entrepreneurships and investors on long uh, business terms, I think that Turkey may be still one of the most accurate positions, globally speaking. Yes, that, that's very exciting, right? right? like developing economies, we have developing ecosystems. That's wonderful. Asla, what's your opinion? Ec the ecosystem is a breaking point. We, we know that, right? We see that for the first time there is competition and that, I mean, there is a competitive approach that because they're, the, I mean, you can see practically the investors running through opportunities. So I think that step by step we, we have a market, the investors have a market, but we are on the top, I think. And I think that the, the operating countries are going like by the light speed, literally. There is an extraordinary activity from Egypt from Vietnam to Peru, uh, I mean, I'm talking globally. There is a very speed movement. The, there is a global competition area, and our entrepreneurships, unfortunately, are a, a little bit lower than their global competitors. Our investment sizes are quite low when compared to, to the foreigner investments. Sometimes we have family companies, whenever whenever we are comparing them, we, we are a little bit disadvantaged. So in general, I mean, Turkey is a cheap market for investment. But I mean, we have we have low munition, they say our munition is very low if we want to expand if we want to go abroad. I also can see this. We have skills, both we have young population, th those are good things. This is also a great opportunity. And for the first time in the Turkish history, we have this brain migration. And in the equivalent e ecosystems, this thing is happening quite early, but we are still under shock, under the shock of this occurrence. We have a global WhatsApp group, by, by, by the way, for example, uh, with the guys who are in tech, with the software engineers. They, they are asking for the guys in from Argentina, from uh, Egypt, they say, so that there, there is a total brain migration. And I think that Turkey has a serious diaspora abroad in USA. I mean, uh, back back in time, we had just three investors, let's say, in UK, three investors in state. But now the number of the investors abroad is growing. I mean, whenever someone is like, OK, I'm going to invest in Germany, there is someone who whom they can call and ask for advice. I think that we may realign ourselves on this topic. And I think that we have to um, to explain our potential a little bit um, better. But we are very excited because this is a very serious mo movement. At, at least this is what I feel. Yes, as you as you as you told us, di diaspora is very is a very important. I mean, having a community uh, outside. How, how are the things uh, doing down in there? I, I mean, I, as a keyword, diaspora is a very important, uh, is a very important keyword. Okay, Cecil, when comparing to the French ecosystem, what are your thoughts? Thank you very much. Maybe, first of all, maybe the Turkish ecosystem should be a little bit more analyzed. 
because I, I mean, as I mentioned, uh, when when I started to work in this area, there, there were no Turkish people looking at uh, at the uh, startups from the French side. We had we had USA, Germany, UK, Netherlands. Those, those were the investors back in time, but now. We can see that they turn to other countries too, and this is indicating a change. They are leaning toward the difficult country, to difficult markets, challenging markets, because they feel more empowered, they feel more global, more international. And the Turkish ecosystem has a broader view from a side, from, from abroad. Do we, we have investment departments, we have contacts to, to help the foreign investors in here. But I mean, back in 2016, there was nobody who, who was doing my, my work. So having such contacts, it shows that we reached at a point and also we need to to track those back to France. So this is why we are here. But of course, the the interest toward French uh, was a little bit to the, related to the French ecosystem in twenty. 17, there are only four unicorns, but as of, as of this year, we have 18 unicorns. Also in France, we are growing very fast, so people started to look for opportunities also in there. And in the very first year, uh, half of this year, there was a an investment around three million billions of euro. This is a huge number for for French, and it was one of uh, the ecosystems which was receiving the the highest amount of investments. So they started to compare to the Turkish standards, and also uh, we had the impact of our president because he wants to do a startup. And in order to do that, they are gathering a lot of uh, incentives. They are paying attention to the innovations. And also because he knows that uh, we won't be able to do this alone, they are looking for startups, partnerships, and collaborations from abroad. So we have French tech visa. So basically, we have facilitating tools. and. It's a really facilitating thing for, for a Turkish company, for a Turkish startup who, who who wants to do something in French. And I think that is very effective if you want to go abroad. Uh, I'm totally on you. And, and the market penetration is, is a very important thing. Uh, back in 2018 or, or 17, I, partic I participated to the French Digital Summit. It was a very exciting summit, and I had the opportunity to meet a lot of, a lot of uh, investors. The penetration is gradually increasing. And I see that there is a total focus of the people are actually focusing on that. Thank you very much for, uh, for your answers. So we talked about the ecosystem, but let's talk a little bit about the entrepreneurship. How can you assess what, what, what are the criteria? What are the factors? What is the color? What is the most important detail in here? I would be very excited to hear your opinions. Gülsün. I mean, whenever we are talking about the entrepreneurships, we, we shouldn't be talking only about the their investing markets. We should be talking about early stage investments, operations, which we should be talking about their team. Are they are doing the right thing? Are, have they the right accurate team? What, what, what are their decisions, especially in the early stage, in the development 
stage? What is the history of that startup? Because, I mean, everybody does the business thinking that they are going to succeed, right? So they have a plan which should be basically achieved through their teams. So this is why we pay so much importance on the team. After that, we have the product, and last, last we have the markets. We, we are talking, we are analyzing the market, if it is scalable, if it is successful. We are looking if there is a sustainable advantage, things like that. Thank you. So equality of the team, power of the team. Jan, what about you? Are we talking about the entrepreneurs? Well, yes. Well, as we are financial investors, the money that we invest in, we want to get some revenue, right? So. The entrepreneurs are a part of the equation, but it is more important for us that we need to know what we are looking for, what kind of work we are looking for. We actually only a part of the investment, but we have a symbiotic relationship with the entrepreneur. And they always have more stock than us in the job. So there are some other purposes, some kind of social effect, for example. However, of course, the revenue is more important for the entrepreneur and for us as well. And they need to have the drive to earn the money. They have to have the motivation. And the basis is to have the right equipment to realize this motivation. And you need to know the market, you need to know how to solve your problems. And this is basically the description of what an entrepreneur is. So when we look at these people, what we look for is the better quality and uh, someone who is able to, or some team who is able to design and realize this plan. So it's kind of an open plan and we need an, we need these kinds of entrepreneurs. This is like a hundred year old question, you know. So I understand uh, your perspective. Asli, what about you? We always invest in, only invest in NW investors, uh, entrepreneurs and startups we look at the resources and is it the right time to use these resources and we also look at the spirit because in nw we have our mentor and volunteers and it is important for them that the people are open to some kind of feedback, for example. When we are looking for the NW candidates, we can co-invest uh, for over $500,000. And I think everything depends on the level the startup or the company is at. Investors can even invest in some CVs, you know, some resumes. If there is a, an entrepreneur that is very knowledgeable about the market, for example, even if they don't have any experience, don't have anything else to offer uh, on paper, they can actually be a good con candidate. And uh, Uber Mafia or uh, PayPal Mafia, we, we can hear about these things in Turkey, for example. They can get uh, really big investments, even if they don't have anything to offer at, at, the, at the beginning. But as the level increases, the investors start to look at the real traction. And even in the early stages, it is important to show the investor that even if there is just a single person in the world that loves this product that you are putting out, 
That's the important thing. The investor wants to see that. Can they create attraction even in a single group or even in a single person? So the investor needs to know why this product that you're offering is a good fit for themselves. So this is the equation, basically. And as the progress goes on, it basically turns into a financial decision at the end. And you can have a clear projection maybe in the later stage. But in the beginning, like I said, every investor, I believe, rather than looking at the percentages and the numbers and figures, uh, they need to see that uh, safety and that feeling of security they get up from the startups, from the entrepreneurs. And the growth actually happens in the scale-up process. And if the investor believes that the team that is working is the right team for tackling any problem that can face during this growing phase, they can easily invest. Even if the two, let's say there are two entrepreneurs that have the basically same uh, features on paper, the, the team or the entrepreneur that gives that kind of security or the safety feeling to the investor, they would be more advantageous. Yeah, there is a difference between the first uh, entrepreneurs or startups and uh, the veteran entrepreneurs. Uh, you talked about this difference, actually. And uh, I think yeah, during the projects or after the first period, this happens a lot. So what about you, Cecil? My thoughts are a little bit different because we are not investors, you know. Uh, I want to talk about this thing in France. There is kind of a thing called Grund, and there are two classifications in France for very successful startups, Next 40 and French Tech 120. So these are two groups for startups, successful startups, and most of these startups to be included in these classes, these groups, It is not just about the financial criteria. And as I'm not an investor, of course, this is easy for me to say. Uh, because, of course, for investors, the revenues are important. But, uh, for example, social networks, social um, environment, for example, for the startups, these are really important. And there are some discussions and some practices regarding this. And I want to give you an example. There are some uh, startups, too good to go. There is a startup in France. They actually prevent uh, good meals to go to waste. And they couldn't get into the big classes that I mentioned, but they are actually regarded as a very successful startup and they will have a clear path in front of them, I believe. So similarly, uh, these inequalities or uh, something about poverty, uh, combating poverty or some equality inequalities, I think this is very important in looking at the startups and I think these should be included in the criteria when we are evaluating them. And when I was uh, helping some uh, startups in France, I work with the investment agencies according to regions. And uh, whatever the industry the startup is in, we want to look for something uh, environmental or social added value. And the investment agencies actually are more interested in these kinds of topics. So they get better support in order to help them help the startups uh, take concrete steps. 
So I think these issues should be uh, in the forefront. Yes, of course, uh, the uh, subject of effect actually is uh, becoming very, very important. And it is not only a success cr criteria, and the social effect and the environmental effect is really uh, important. And yes, the excessive food and uh, food waste is another important issue, and this becomes a very valuable issue, actually. So, okay, uh, I want to talk about the timing a little bit. An entrepreneur or uh, a startup, for you to uh, communicate with them, you can think about the issue as uh, specific to organizations or the entrepreneurs themselves. What should be the timing, you know, when they should uh, take the first step? You can take a look at this question uh, in the very general sense. But what can you tell me about the timing? Well, an entrepreneur actually during the investment phase they grow by taking five or six investments along the way. So investment is not an ending thing. Uh, it is an everlasting and uh, continuous thing. The startups and the entrepreneurs should definitely be talking to investors throughout the process. And uh, seed capital uh, is the early investment, as you, as we all call it. but. Uh, MVP should be uh, in the hands of the startup, of course. Yes, we want to see some traction in the beginning. This could be a customer. This could be some pilot uh, places where the product is tried out. And we. this is what gets our attention. Maybe pre-serial A uh, stage is where we actually are interested. And something else that I see in investors, when an entrepreneur needs a an investment, I believe everyone will say the similar things. Every investment uh, company or every investor has their plan, you know, uh, and they have their decisions to make. They are not always investing in things. So everyone should have some kind of a plan, you know, what kind of... Uh, money do I need? What kind of capital do I need? And uh, who can provide me with this opportunity? So the, the entrepreneurs or the startups, they should also uh, look towards these investors who can be helpful for them. And because of our strategies, for example, as investors, we cannot always uh, invest in some projects and uh, these can lead to some mm, misleading situation or maybe some of the startups or entrepreneurs should get disheartened if the uh, investment doesn't come in the early stages or serial A uh, investors, for example. Uh, if it's not happening for you, then you can go to B and C. You know, you need to test out your investors as well. So you say the startups should do their homework before they go out for investors. Yes. So what about you, Jeff? I will define three things. Uh, you know, I'm putting my in um, entrepreneur hat on, and I'm an entrepreneur myself. Uh, I have a very young startup as well. The first thing I want to say is that if you are going for an investment, everyone you talk to may not be an investment, investor. I mean, they may not put out the money for your project. And especially, you need to be knowledgeable about the huge, vast space of investors, you know. You need to know your investors. If the person you are talking to is someone that can invest in your project in the period that you are in, I mean in the stage you are in, then you need to basically align your project with their investment abilities and you can create the spark. And this is 
actually another experience. You need to be a little bit experienced uh, about these issues. And this is a learning process, of course. But to summarize, I can say that the vast space of investors who can invest in you is a spectacle in the huge space of investors, basically. And there are a lot of things with regards to feedback in every layer of your work. I mean, this is like a food chain, basically. In this food chain, uh, the Endeavors Fund and the uh, other funds that they are investing together in, if you want to create a $50 million worth of work, uh, you need to know from three years ago what kind of projects they were looking for. And this is only learned by asking. There are a lot of startups that we have talked and with every startup uh, we actually teach them a lot of valuable lessons so I believe this is very important in this process even though I'm an investor I can actually talk to other investors you know bigger investors and I as an entrepreneur myself as a startup myself I can get experience and I can get feedback from them this is really important. The second one was the feedback. And the third one I want to mention is that it is difficult to get this feedback as an analysis, you know. Uh, they talk about a lot of things, the investors and the startups and the entrepreneurs. But the more important thing is to attract the investors' attention. So a lot of investors go around and say that, yes, we are looking for startups. Uh, but any investor you can think of, they have something in mind. They have an, a, a topic, they have a subject, they have a clear field they want to invest in. So if you are actually talking to an investor as a startup, uh, you don't have to have the money, have the investment right away, but you need to uh, actually position yourself in that area where you can talk to other investors and get their feedback. Yes, the timing is really important and this process doesn't happen overnight. Yes, we need to take into account the feedbacks as well. What about you, Asla? Well, there is not much to add. The investors Investors do not invest in uh, just the T point and they just uh, invest in the process. So the earlier you meet the investors, the better. And the economist probably uh, said something about it, that startups and entrepreneurs are starting to fill my email box Maybe you are in Gusum's level now and you will be at GEM's level maybe in a year, but even right now when you are at a lower level, uh, you, it is important for you to get these emails and updates, for example. Uh, I recommend everyone who is looking for investment uh, to look for these types of, for example, the uh, update emails from The Economist or similar areas. Of course, everyone is in the field looking for investor. And one of the founders, at least one of the founders, should be in the field talking to investors and it will take time. And systematically, the team you have should be uh, focused on doing the work, putting in the work. I don't recommend three founders, for example, if it's a team of three founders, they should not be all doing the same thing. And for example, one can do uh, the field work and update the team uh, and maybe face these up and downs by themselves. But uh, 
not everyone should do the same thing because you can always get rejected for a hundred times, but for the hundred and first time, you will uh, get your investment. And uh, the people who are the person or who is uh, emotionally strong enough to handle these types of rejections or up and down of this process uh, should be out in the field. So it's not a job for everyone. And even if there are some people, some investors who don't know about your sector, for example, and this could be disheartening as well. But there are some things that they are doing well that they are actually uh, seeing the patterns. Uh, they have the pattern recognition. So that's why they are the investors that you are going for. I want to talk to you about an anecdote. During this year, we listened to the presentation of a very good startup. We wanted actually to invest, but instead of the founder, I mean, we saw that we saw the staff, the personnel who just uh, was employed in there. They they knew all the figure figures. They know the number, knew the numbers. And we say that, okay, we are not the partners and we need to go out. But it is very important to, to know your business. It's quite critical, right? I mean, a fully governance, fully management is very important. Cecil, what on your side? What about you? Uh, at which stage should the entrepreneurships contact the business friends? Uh, it is a really clever question because a lot of startups that I talk to, they they are like, okay, without finding someone in in France, I wouldn't go, I wouldn't settle in France. Maybe this isn't the right way for a Turkish startup to think into the business, because I mean they have already. I mean if you are already good in your own market, on your own line of business, if you have a presence in in your own market as a startup, then you can also have a look to the foreign markets. I mean I'm not talking about looking into investors. I mean looking into targets, into opportunities, into competitors looking if there is any potential in that specific market, if there are uh, strategical sectors defined by the state, by the, because there are also some incentives. Other than that, I think that we need to do, while we, we put up a startup, we need to set an international strategy we need to set up the expenses, a certain budget. But it, it, it's very far, it's very, sorry, it's very hard to be able to look from the distance to an investor. I, I'm not talking about Ethiopian, et cetera, examples, but I mean, I'm talking about the competitors, incentives, ecosystem. We need to find an incubator. I think that should be the first stage for, for France, at least. Uh, because the duty of an incubator is to match the partners and the investors. And I think that this we way more facilitate the the business that you start in Turkey. You, you will have the opportunity to meet the investors. And I think that it should be done stage by stage because I'm, I'm talking about that because uh, I'm hearing this all the time. OK, I won't be going if I don't find a, find find a, an investor. And I know I, I want to tell you that there are actually opportunities for early stage in France in 2010, we had the seed and press seed investments, and they increased up to 60%. And I think that this is something good for early stage startup. They should be looking, uh, 
they should be looking into France using the incubators. Of course, growing doesn't mean that you need to have a flow of investments, but you need also to have other sources. So we talked about entrepreneurships, about a ecosystems, and I want to touch briefly the ent entrepreneurship, entrepreneurs by themselves. I'm going to ask you a few questions. What are the hot topics for the entrepreneurship? I mean, it may be a current working entrepreneurship or well, something new. And on the other hand, I have the business models and value suggestions. I think that th those are qu quite grown. And well, what are the topics that, that the entrepreneurship should stay away from? What are your thoughts or maybe suggestions? Gilson, let's start with you. I think that the entrepreneurs, they, they need to know where their opportunities lay. First of all, digitalization. Digital is very important. I mean, the other sectors, uh, the trends are changing. For example, the today's trend may become obsolete next year. My suggestion is if we are looking into new opportunities, if there is digitalization, then there is an opportunity. As you know, we have the climate crisis. Everyone is talking around this. And I think that business models, business ideas will be more important on this topic decreasing of carbon release solutions, energy solution, renewable energy, energy saving solutions. But I think that everything that would help us to overcome more easily this climate crisis would be would be an opportunity because there are some saturated areas. So instead of going to those saturated areas because, I mean, the, I think that this is wrong. Okay, I should invest in this area because there are others already investing. And I, I think, I truly think that the same business model shouldn't be repeated. I mean, different approaches, different business models, the, the, there is the opportunity. Climate change, we are not talking, this is a very important, significant that are not climate change, but climate crisis. Jam, what about you? I have two topics, one on entrepreneur's side, because I'm an entrepreneur myself. The size of the issue and the solution for that problem and the size of population who can benefit from that solution. Our neighborhood, our district, our close geography. But I mean, it should be more than that. It should be a global solution, if it can be. Of course, the equation, let me put in here the equation. In order for the problem and solution to be applicable for everyone, this is something pro rata with us knowing the entire world. I mean, without going out, without without leaving Istanbul, Ankara, or just by staying in your own incubator within your own culture. I mean, this is this is really inefficient. And I really see this handicap. I mean, there is a lack of knowledge. So my suggestion for my younger colleagues, I mean, the, the resources are not easy to find, but, but, but I mean, just, just go to, to, Latin, to Latin America, go to Far East, go to, go to 
to Western countries, work in there, make your money in there, learn some foreign languages. I don't know, just just uh, have a larger, a broader global vision. Try to understand the the global requirements, the common denominators. And only after you do that, turn back to Turkey with a greater vision. I mean, here we have 80 or 90 millions of people, and they have similar consumption profiles. I'm not talking only about food entertainment. The health is also consumption for me. So those are basic requirements. There, there is a, a even a bigger geography, right? Like 20 or 30 times bigger in the rest of the world. And whenever you are producing or offering something, if you want to go larger, you have to do that. You, 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 this was my first topic. You have to know the bigger problem. And on the second topic, when you are designing something, please don't run into the wrong markets. Okay, I will put it like that. I'm going to make money without without uh, working too much. I mean, I have a big data, and this big data uh, will make me earn money. This is not, not right. It's not working like that. It, you start to make money from the beginning. You start to work. You need to have a capital. So here we have less money in this market. I mean, this is only only a myth. You you can't. We are not a market in which millions of dollars are flown into. And if you are running on after an endeavor like that, then you won't be able to do anything. You'll just be stuck. Of course, I'm totally with you. I'm, I'm not talking only about going like physically, but uh, contributing this even online. And there are something uh, I, I want to tell you something. There are kids. There are kids of 13 years old. They are entrepreneurships of 13 years old. And that kid was like, OK, I'm 13 years old and I'm already doing my second investments. Oh, of course, I'm totally with you. Another example, five or six years before in New York, there was a, I listened to one of a venture capitalist partner and that guy was like, OK, I'm spending every year one month in South Korea, of course. And I'm observing their behavioral patterns among the youngsters, especially because I mean, they, they have leading behaviors. So uh, it was asked at last like what was your your last observation and that guy was like okay i'm not gonna share it with with anyone i mean we we, we think america like b2c but even the americans are looking are leaning toward korean trends so as gusum is telling each sector may be disrupted and i mean Instead of saying that, OK, we have too many startups in here, we have to, I think that that it's very important to match the the ideas. I mean, if I'm going to establish a gaming a gaming uh, startup, I mean, I, I, I won't succeed. I mean, I'm not, I, I shouldn't go like, OK, everybody's investing in gaming. Let, 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 let's do something in game. But I'm not a gamer myself. I don't know the sector. But if we have like very two or three very smart engineer, okay, this is worth listening listening to it, even if the market is very very saturated. Because I mean, we have Zoom, we have Skype, but I mean, we we went to Cisco and we were like, okay, this is this is this is deficient. Of course, those those are some some very few examples. Of course, it's not 
it's not uh, very easy to change some things. The Zoom example is something very extraordinary. But we need we need to know what is the relationship, why this team can do that, what is the 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 issue? Did you do something related to this in your professional life? Another investor was like about a social network networking. And they say, I'm looking at the trends of my friends, and I decided uh, where to go uh, to hang out. And I think, I think that it's important to see if those people have actually a community in their lives, if they have a charisma. But I mean, for. You don't need something like that for for putting putting up a an accounting program, but you need an organic connection in here. That there there should be a bulb a bulb lighting in their heads. I mean sometimes I'm I'm looking in Instagram. You are you are eating. I don't know what uh, in Thailand. I mean if you come to me with food and beverage, okay. I mean, for to me, you are you are the body and body thing of that sector. I think that this is very important, and I think that people should should think a little bit more on this one. Thank you. Uh, yeah, yeah, the food and beverage thing was very right. You are, you need to adapt. You need to to adapt yourself, Ceci. What are your thoughts? Okay, I don't have much time. I'm gonna go quicker. So if you wanna go to France, I'm gonna speak directly. You need to, to look into the sectors predefined by the state and then you should be looking into opportunities. You should be knowing the privileges, the priorities of France, smart cities, food, environment. Aviation. Aviation has a very sensible, sensitive strategy. Digital health. Those sectors are receiving a lot of incentives. I'm talking about 30 billions of uh, euro spent about the state, not only for startup but also for innovation. And of course, this is directly impacting the, the, the startups too. So if you are operating in those lines of business, I think that you should be looking into France. So this is pretty much all. We still have two minutes. Super. Thank you very much. And before before leaving, I want to share something with you. Uh, what, what, I want you actually to share something with me. Any anything new, anything that you'll be putting on forward, Gusum. Thank you very much. It was a very enjoyable panel. In the upcoming days, we are not planning anything, but as a startup up, I can say that in March we were founded. We are uh, continuing to do the new investments. So if there are investors, they can meet us, they can contact us whenever they, they want. We'll be very happy to assess. We have a new numeration programs. Uh, 15 October is the deadline for the application. I'm talking about one to 500,000 investment we we are uh, looking at this as the turkish investment version and the enterprises who wants to have 500 ks within these investments they should be quick and we are gathering everything within the new uh, this new forum, so we are attracting the new investors, and they can contact us. Thank you, Asla. We have a continuous application process. We have different programs. 
use the future program supported by ACBank, and I think that within one month we'll be opening the applications. And yesterday we have the Talents and Values Consulting Agency, is an HNR consulting agency for startups. We are starting to look into the salaries. Uh, this is something that uh, is done by by the great uh, the, by, by the bigger consulting uh, agencies. There is a trending report which is already published. You can find it on social media. You can see what are the trends of the salaries, the the working policies, and also you can reach to detailed data on skills, on software engineers' salaries, etc because this this is a very hot topic so so we did we did us to support a little bit the the startup and also they can look into the social media connections of endeavor cecil i want to talk about the french copy community Last week in Istanbul, French Tech Istanbul was opened and is a very nice uh, bridge between the two countries. And we have public institutions, enterprises, startups, and I think that this may be the first step toward France. Thank you very much to all of you for allowing your time and for your answers. Thank you very much to all of our listen listeners. Thank you. See you.